Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday Live. I'm super excited to be here again to bring you some more arty inspiration for the weekend. So, of course, if you don't know me, my name is Ashley Hay, and what I love to do is inspire creativity. So I'm here today to bring you some playful possibilities, and I thought we'd have a look at some more interesting objects that you may have found over the years that just open up possibilities for doing some incredible quirky, quirky artworks. So I know there's a lot of you out there who love anything quirky and um, especially with your colours and um, also things that move. And so I thought we'd take a look at some objects that actually move today so that they've got um, potential for motion and so that people can actually interact with your artwork as well, or you can rearrange them in a different way on your um, in your home. So you might sit them down or stand them up or move them around depending on what you want. So let's take a look and welcome Nicole. Great to see you here. And um, we're going to hop straight in today to having a look at some quirky objects. So um, what have you got? What objects have you found over the years that are maybe stashed away that you thought might be incredible as the basis of an artwork? Now, I know I've got some, and so I thought I'd pull them out today and show you a couple of things that I've found. And I um, I'm just so excited because I've been thinking every time I see these things, I think, oh, I really must do something with those. Um, and sometimes there's an object that you find or see that just inspires a little bit of creative fire in you. And um, so we want to tap into that in the coming week. So, of course, this week is the last days of our upcycling challenge. So next week on Friday Live, we are going to be changing things up a bit back into some mixed media mania. So um, stay tuned for that one. All righty. Um, let's take a look down at the art table and I can show you some of these quirky things and we can talk through some playful possibilities of what we can actually do. So go to the art table. Right, so here you can see I have found, and of course you would have seen on the cover that I have these quirky quirky lampshades so I've got four of these and I've actually I saw them the other day and I went oh I really must do something with those and so the thing that attracted me to them in the first place was the fact that they had this shiny light bulb they look like little people and they're done with amazing metal uh, that bends and moves so just imagine what I can do with these. So I can have them so they can stand up. And of course you could do it so that they can actually, you can, you can change the position. So how good is that? Um, and if I, I've actually got two that don't have the globes and when you take the globe off, just wonder if I can do that easily. Yes, it's a twisty one. So when you take the globe off, you've got this little form that could actually be a little head or, um, you know, you could actually build onto that or maybe even take that fitting off altogether so that the head sits lower and more in proportion. But this is quite quirky, having the globe up higher and having that longer neck and having this incredibly big head. And so one of the things I'd like to do is obviously leave some of the original elements coming through. So I'd quite like to leave some of the globe coming through. So you've got this really shiny um, piece here. And of course the metal arms and the metal legs, I don't want to touch at all because I want them to still be movable and interesting. So where I will create is on the body, on the head, on the hands and on the feet. 
And so there's all sorts of possibilities. So if you guys can think of a quirky possibility that you might do with this, I would love to hear from you. Um, but I'm just thinking some quirky people and even, um, you know, maybe even sort of taking in that idea of um, animals and people um, put together. I can't remember what it's called. I'll have to look it up and get back to you on that one. But where you've actually got um, like, say, a person's head with a bird form so that you're actually um, taking on some elements of the animals within the um, people form. So it's, it's got a name, but do you think for the life of me, I can remember at the moment? No. So this is just an awesome one. Who just loves that? If you just drop me a comment, um, I would love to hear. And hey, Robin, lovely to hear from you. And someone is just saying that those lamps are just perfect for sculpture, aren't they just? So I don't know who that is. So if that's you that's made that comment, I'd just um, pop your name in the comments as well so that I can see who you are. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so just absolutely brilliant for mucking around with and playing with sculpture. So that's the first one. So what, and oh, you know where I got this? I went to the salvage yard to pick up something else for home or something for art. And I happen to see these. So I always have a bit of a scrounge at the salvage yard from time to time. And it is amazing some of the things that you can find. So let me show you this other one, which also has kind of quirky possibilities in terms of what you can do. So this one is a juicer. And what I love about it is that it's, again, got some motion in it. So you could do something with this piece where um, you create an element that actually moves up and down based on people actually interacting with the sculpture. So this can be quite exciting and obviously gives another element to your artwork. So if the viewer can actually interact with your artwork and there's something that they have to do, it makes them more curious about, oh, I wonder what would happen if I actually pull that lever. What does it do? And so especially if you have some sort of reveal. So you imagine that I've got something tucked away inside of here, inside this cup, and I've got some sort of quirky head on here. And then I lift it up and there's some sort of reveal that happens when you actually open it up. And so that becomes the surprise. Um, so lots and lots of possibilities. So keep an eye out for objects that actually have mechanisms. Old lights are brilliant as well, the ones which have the counter levers. Imagine what you can do with those. And even if you still want to use it, imagine upcycling your lamps and actually having it so that it's some sort of quirky monster that looks over you or some sort of quirky person that watches over uh, over you while you work so um yeah quirky possibilities with things that are designed for our living spaces and um, things that actually have very simple mechanisms that you can then utilise within your artwork and create something quite quirky and different. So I hope that gets your creative juices flowing. And if you have got something that you're thinking, oh, I've actually got that stashed away and I could use that, then drop your ideas of what you might already have in there. And I know that some of you guys have a whole shed of stashes of stuff. And I'm sure that you would have some really quirky mechanical objects that you could incorporate into your sculptures. So it might be elements that you then join and utilise and add something else to. So um, quirky motion objects. And then, of course, if we are taking something like this, and we're wanting to actually work on, on the piece, 
then you want to pay some attention to your sculptural form, like we've talked about in previous weeks and how to actually create sculptural form. So if you have missed some of those live episodes on sculptural form, just go back and have a little bit of a look, a scroll through, and you'll find some elements of how to build sculptural form. But essentially, I wanted to show you, hey, uh, Donna, lovely to see you and Christine as well. And um, Christine, I know that you've got a shed full of stuff. So I'm sure that you would have some things out there that actually move. So you'll have to go and have a scrounge in those sheds and pull out and see what arty objects you could actually repurpose this weekend that actually have some motion elements. So it does make it really interactive for the viewer and um, when you can um, get them to do a little something. Uh, so, so Donna's just saying, the the Therians throat. I don't I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> I'll have to look into it. I I don't think that's what it is, but I will definitely look up that. Um, but that wasn't the word that I was thinking of, but nice try. So if anyone else can think, and I will definitely get onto it this week and I'll let you know, so stay tuned for that one. Um, okay, so I just want to, uh, so with quirky ideas for sculptural form, I thought I'd also show you some real attention to detail in terms of finishes and um, I've been fortunate to have uh, Christy Margam El Elkins actually be coming to the studio for a few sessions now where she's actually taught some of her wonderful bottle animals um, at the Powtech studio. It's been wonderful to have her in the studio and her bottle animals that she's been working on all year are just superb. She has done some amazing things. And so at some stage I'll have to see if I can actually get her on and show uh, some of her things off, but um, she's just got a whole array of incredible animals. Um, and if you're coming to the craft show in November at, in Perth, then you will see some of those. But let me show you this and just talk through. So this is Vincent van Gogh. So we made him the other week. This is my one that I made. I still need to put his little beardy on. So he's missing his little um, beardy at the moment. <coughs> But the reason why I wanted to show you was because these are the sort of sorts of possible finishes that you can get with your sculptures. So you can actually push them to the nth degree and really um, look for precision details and do some beautiful work with stone art and fabrics and textures to really create delightful sculptural form. And to do the sculptural form, you j just can use simple materials like styrofoam and wire and T-shirt material and um, masking tape and uh, aluminium foil to create the form. And then, of course, if you want to do some really beautiful elements, you might use some stone art to actually build faces or hands or um anything like that and you can also incorporate your polymer clay elements in with your Powtex so that you you make your hands your faces with the polymer clay and then actually use your fabrics and fibers um, to actually create the rest of the sculptural form which is really gorgeous too so um, you imagine taking these sorts of finishes onto this sort of sculptural form. So this is um, what you need to consider is how can I take it from being what it is now and transform it into something really quirky and really interesting. And that's where your creativity comes out to play and you can really play with characters and um, juxtaposing elements. So like um, feathers for hair or um, you know, wings or um, tentacles or all sorts of possibilities of things that you can do. And um, so it's really great to actually, um, you know, have a look at what other people are doing, but then 
let your imagination just run wild and go, hmm, and just get started. I think sometimes we think, oh, we've got to have a total plan worked out in terms of what we're going to do. But you'll find, and I know I'll find, once I get started, because I've got so many ideas running through my head, that just by doing it, you actually will find the direction through the piece and the piece will actually speak what it wants to be in the end for you. So just get started, have a starting point. So I think I'm going to, with these, I think I'll start with the hands, but I could also on one of the other pieces actually start with the head and play with the globe and then from there, I can go, okay, now that I've got these quirky bone things happening, um, you know, I want the hands and the feet to be quite bony as well. So I've got four of those to make. Um, probably won't get done immediately because I'm going to start playing with some mixed media canvases, which I'm super excited about. And um, I am just, I, I have just finished recording The Lady in Rags. And so you guys will be able to access um, The Lady in Rags as an art workshop if you can't get to a workshop near you. So all around Australia, there are fabulous trainers who do amazing artwork with Powertex. And so if you want to get your hands on and you want to really try the Powertex out, the best way is to actually find a trainer near you, get in contact with them and actually do a class because it will fast track your understanding of the materials and the processes and just take you to the next level with your artwork. Okay, so I know that you're going to have so much fun this weekend. So those of you who are already playing with Powertex, I'm sure you're going, oh, I wonder what I've got that actually moves that I could incorporate. And so next week in the Creative Hub, I look forward to seeing all those possibilities of what you actually do and um, make. So um, if you haven't joined the Creative Hub yet, these are the details on the screen. So it's the Powtex Australia Creative Hub and we connect and share there. And like I said earlier, it is the last days of our upcycling challenge and someone is going to actually win my Rust FX online video workshop from their participation over the last couple of months in the challenge. If you have an idea for what you might like to do as a new challenge, please drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And um, because I think, wouldn't it be great to have another challenge of some sort? So we'll have to put our thinking caps on and go, okay, what's next? So let me know if you've got some ideas and also let me know if there's something that you would like to know with Powertex, with regards to Powertex. If you're stuck with anything, um, then I can pop on a live and actually um, help you out. Alrighty, so um, if you would like to learn more about Powertex, then of course you can go to the website. And if you are in Queensland, Natalie Parrish is um, there with Bag End Studios. In Sydney, you've got Liz Taliga with No Limits Art. And here in WA, of course, um, there are trainers and uh, me around as well. And so um, it's just about connecting with those people. And if you go to the Powertex website, there is actually a trainers section where you can find someone near you. All righty. So the main thing is, though, that I hope that you're excited with possibilities um, and especially with movement and going out and finding some objects that actually move for the weekend that you can play with. Now, the other thing I do know is some of you probably got quite inspired by um, the, by the um, natural materials. I love working with natural materials. So I am really drawn to nature. I get a lot of my inspiration from nature. I love the macro environment and the textures and the colors and the juxtaposition of different elements. Um, and I use that quite a lot in my artwork. So for me, natural materials are actually quite exciting to work with. So the other thing that I have had for a little while that I just think, 
I, I like it the way it is, but I do think that, um, you know, there are just so many possibilities in terms of what I could do with this if I steampunked it up. So I know Fraser Ives, um, you imagine um, this with the black and um, all steampunked, it would be quite spectacular, wouldn't it, with some chains hanging down. And um, so uh, that's what I'm thinking with that piece. And just quickly, let me show you something else, because here in Australia, we're very lucky with some of the natural materials that we have around. And of course, if you're in New Zealand, you have truckloads of driftwood and the driftwood is just, oh my goodness. I remember standing on the beach in New Zealand and looking at the driftwood and going, oh my goodness, look at these piles and piles of exciting materials that could be used for art. And of course, um, it's harder to find here in WA. But look at these. Now, seed pods are something that we have a lot of here. And how beautiful is this? So I'm thinking that it could actually form the basis of some sort of tail that um, I just have to work out how I'm going to make it stand. But the textures and the look of it, you imagine that incorporated into a piece. And then this one is a smaller version of the large one that is also super, super, super exciting. And um, it looks like a bird already. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I might turn this into a bird. So there you go. Australians, look out for those wonderful seed pods and let us know what you've got in your part of the world that inspires you from nature too. All right, let me just have a quick look and see and I'll make sure I've addressed any questions. Um, so let's see. Uh, so Christine is just asking, how can you incorporate polymer clay with Powtex and do you have to bake the polymer clay? Absolutely, you would have to bake the polymer clay, Christine. And um, so that's probably something that we can talk about another time. And um, so I'll put that in my to-do list. But essentially, you would make the polymer clay elements and then add them onto your sculptures in the same way as you do your standing figures and attach your plaster torsos or your plaster hands. So you would just make the elements that you're going to attach instead of pr uh, purchasing the pre-made ones, you would be making them yourself. Okay, so um, that is that one. So thank you for that question, that's awesome. And um, <laughs> ah, Mary, um, so I know, um, so she's actually saying, I actually have one of those juices and it doesn't really work properly as a juicer. So now guess what it might end up with, you know. So um, if you've got one of those in your stash, then have a play with it, especially if it doesn't work anymore. Um, and how much fun could that be and what are the creative possibilities? So I look forward to seeing what you um, actually do. And Robin has just given some lovely feedback. So Christy has made some fabulous animals. Absolutely. Her animals are just absolutely stunning. She's done a possum that is made with coffee beans and she's done a beautiful kookaburra made with stone art. And uh, her owl is made with 3D flex and they are just gorgeous. So if you love Vincent, there is going to be a Vincent class coming up. Um, if you haven't done that one yet and you would like to do it, I think it is the 21st of August from memory. So if you're in Perth and you would like to do that one, then, um, you know, get in touch and I will put you onto the information. Okay. Um, so someone else is saying, um, Christy is a superstar Powtex queen, absolutely. Her artwork is gorgeous. And um, she has also done a really um, wonderful little yogi person that has polymer clay, hands and feet and head. And then she has incorporated the Powtex. So I'll have to see um, if she'll hop on at some stage and we can chat to her 
um, about that. So thank you so much for joining us. And oh, Robin's just said that she sees angel wings in the small um, the small seed pods. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so the possibilities are endless, and so they they're just insane. So my hope is that what I've bought you this weekend will really inspire you to possibilities and get you creating. And that's what I'm here to do. And um, I just love inspiring you guys and seeing what you come up with and the creative possibilities of PowerTex art supplies are just insane um, what you can do the sky is the limit there is just no limit it's only limited by your imagination and um, it just enables you to do so many different um, things from mixed media to jewelry to uh, sculpture and um, even um, <coughs> you know art objects for your home as well so i hope you've thoroughly enjoyed that today and um, I look forward to all of you, your posts in the Creative Hub in the next few days. Um, you've got until the end of tomorrow to post any of your upcycled artwork that you've done over the last couple of months and don't forget to tag Upcycling Challenge so that um, we can see that you are part of that. So um, we look forward to seeing you in the Hub and seeing um, everything that you do and from me to you this weekend have a wonderful creative weekend and um, filled with arty possibilities and play so ciao for now everyone have a great weekend see you next week bye